Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on some test type problems, shorter problems that could be in a multiple choice format. So we have a company pays its employees 4350 each Friday, which amounts to 870 per day for a five day work week that begins on Monday. So Monday through Friday work week, they get paid 870 per day if that gets paid at the end of the week on Friday. If the monthly accounting period ends on Thursday, and employees worked through Thursday, the amount of salaries earned but unpaid at the end of the accounting period is what? Okay, I'm going to open up a trial balance so that we can compare this to a trial balance. It will not be a trial balance related to this, but a trial balance is a great kind of cheat sheet to give us a lot of information. Therefore, I'm going to pull this on this side. I recommend practicing with a trial balance to give you some idea of what we're looking into. So here's a trial balance. Assets on top in green, liabilities in orange or yellow, the equity section and then income and expense down here and credits are represented with bracketed numbers so i'm going to unhighlight these and we're talking about the adjusting process now so when we talk about the adjusting process there's going to be one uh, account above the line here above the blue line or a balance sheet account and one income statement below the blue line and we can we can look at the trial balance i can say what account might be related to this we're talking about wages or salary and that might be wages payable or salaries payable on the balance sheet side. So that's the account we're going to be dealing with. And on the income statement side, what account would be related to wages or some kind of payroll? And that might be wages expense, payroll expense, salaries expense, something like that. And we know that expenses only go up. So what's happening here is we're debiting the expense to increase the expense and we're crediting the liability. So that's going to be the journal entry. Why are we doing that? Because as of the cutoff date, we can think about it at the end of the month or the end of the year, uh, we need to make the financials correct on an accrual basis. And so what happens is that the employees worked and they only get paid at the end of the pay period. We have the payroll recorded on kind of a cash basis, but uh, that means that as of the cutoff date, there's days that have been worked that have not been accounted for. Therefore, we need to adjust that. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna say they get paid weekly weekly pay and that's going to be for 4350 now there's a five day work week so the days in the week in this case are five and if we divide that out then we're going to say well this is how much they get paid for the end of one week which includes five days divided by five and they gave us that number as well that's the 870 pay per day now they don't get that till friday so our problem is that the cutoff date, well, let's pretend it's 1231, the end of the year, happened on Thursday. So that means that uh, as of the cutoff date, we haven't recorded the fact that the four days were worked, and we need that four days of expense on our financial statement under an accrual basis. So we're going to include those four days, and we're going to say there's the 870 times those four days, and we're saying that there should be a liability, a liability here, and an expense that needs to be recorded, debit the expense, credit the liability for 3480 the amount that has been earned and not yet paid as of the cutoff date for payroll. Next one says that an adjusting entry was made on year end December 31st to accrue salaries expense of 3100 which of the following entries would be prepared to record the 6,800 payments of salaries in January of the following year? So for this one, we have to actually kind of imagine what the adjusting entry would be and then see how the, the payroll department would deal with it in the following period. So we're saying that we're dealing with wages payable and the accrual that had to happen at the end of the year in order to include the wages that needed to be paid uh, through the end of the year that, that needed to be recognized at expense that had not yet been paid they're not going to get paid till january but they have been earned people have worked and earned those wages in december so we need to put those on the books in december and if we look at our accounts we say what balance sheet account is going to be related to wages or salary or some kind of thing it's going to be wages payable and what's going to be the income statement account related to salaries or wages or some kind of thing it's going to be wages expense so and wages expense only goes up so the adjusting entry is a debit to wages expense. We debited wages expense and say debit and credit. And that was for 3-1 and we credited 
three, one. I'm going to represent credits with negative numbers or bracketed numbers to the payable, the wages payable. So that means the wages payable went up now by the 3,100. Now, if we uh, adjusted for that, if we did a reversing entry, which would be nice so that the payroll didn't have to deal with our adjusting entry, then we would just reverse that exactly as of the day after the day we make the financial statements. This would make the financial statements correct as of the day that we need to print the financial statements, including the expense of the what has been earned by the employees and the liability of what we owe the employees as of the cutoff date. But uh, if we don't make that adjusted entry, then the accounting department's going to have to reverse this transaction when they process the next payroll. So what happens when they process the payroll now, they're going to say, well, now the payroll is usually they're going to pay the 6800 When they pay the 6800 what usually happens? We would credit cash. Cash is going to go down. So we're going to credit cash for, I'm going to, just, I'll just type it. Cash is fairly small. I can type that in there. Credit to cash of 6800 and then we would normally debit the wages or payroll or whatever the expense is going to be we're going to debit the wages expense I'll put that up top now the problem is that only part of this 6800 relates to the wages for the next year for January some of them have already been recognized in December how much have been recognized in December of that 6800 as expenses in the last year that's our accrual entry. That's the reversal that we have to make here. So we're, we have on the books now wages payable, a permanent account that needs to be reversed. So that's what we're going to reverse here. We're going to pull out the wages payable. And that's going to be a debit to make it go down to zero. So we had a credit. And then this is going to bring wages payable back down to zero in January. And then the difference, which is going to be the 6008 minus the 3-1, that's going to be what we need for the expense in the current year, which is 3-7. I'm going to use my negative sum entry and say that's going to the here. And so now these two, of course, add up to the 6-8, and that's going to be the credit here. So this is the amount of expenses that we're recognizing in January because we recognized these expenses back in December even though we're paying out the total cash of 6800 in January. Next one says that on April 1st, company received 16380 from the customer for a 36-month subscription to several different magazines. The company credited unearned fees for the amount received and the subscription started immediately. Uh, what is the adjusting entry that should be recorded by the company on December 31st of the first year? Okay, so... The idea here is we want to first see what happened and then do the adjusting entry. So I'm going to go back over here and we're just going to take a look at a trial balance, unrelated trial balance, but we can kind of glean some idea of what needs to happen from it. So we're going to say what's going to be the balancing account related to uh, the, the unearned revenue in this case. They gave us the unearned revenue and that of course will be unearned revenue. It's a liability. We can see it's a liability down here because it's in the liability section and then what what's going to be the income statement account related to the unearned revenue and that's actually going to be revenue so that's going to be the reversing entry now we know that the revenue account has a credit balance it generally only goes up so the reversing entry is going to be increasing the revenue and by crediting it and then debiting the unearned revenue now we might want to think deeper okay how did that get on there why do we have unearned revenue well most types of companies actually Bill the, bill the client or invoice the client before they get paid. Some types of companies actually get paid before they bill the client. This is one of those. If we have magazine subscriptions, we got paid before we gave the magazines. Therefore, when we got paid, this journal entry happened. We said, okay, we got cash, in this case of a debit, when we got paid of 16380 and we had to credit something. We couldn't credit revenue because we had not yet earned it under an accrual basis. So we had to credit unearned revenue, a liability, increase in the liability. Why? Because we owe this money back or we have to do the work. <laughs> one of the other things has to happen. One of the other has to happen. So now we have this, this liability, 16,380. That's what this number would be under this problem. And we need to then recognize how much has been earned. Well, if, if it happened in, in April and we started giving them a magazine in April, uh, through the 36 months 
how many months were in uh, this year. Well, we got April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We're looking at nine months. So if we take this total amount, 16, 3, 80, and whoops, 16, 3, 80, and we say there's going to be 36 months. So there's 36 months. Then how much is it per month? How much are we charging per month? Well, it's going to be the 16, 3, 80 divided by 36 months. So it's going to be 455 per month. How many months have passed as of our cutoff date? Cutoff date 12, 31. That's the date we need to make the financial statements. That's the date we need to make our financial statements correct as of so that we can create the financial statements. Nine months. So that includes April. Be careful if it said April 31st. We wouldn't include April. <laughs> and then we're going to say, okay, this equals the 455 times 9. And so that there's going to be the amount. And now we can see what our adjusting entry was going to be. It's going to be what we talked about. It's going to be the revenue is going to increase. Revenue has a credit balance. We're going to increase it with another credit. So we're going to credit revenue by this number. We're going to put make it a credit with a negative for my purposes. And then we're going to debit something. We're going to debit unearned revenue because now the unearned revenue has been earned. Therefore, unearned revenue needs to go down. So we're going to debit unearned revenue and credit uh, revenue. Why? Because we earned the revenue. The unearned revenue, what's going to be in the account now? 16 minus the 4,095 means that we have 12,285 left in there. And that's going to be, of course, earned throughout the rest of the 36-month period.